Hey everybody, we're going to get started and I am using Google Hangouts. So let me make sure I can share my screen. Sometimes Google Hangouts gets a little finicky, but we're going to go ahead and, and yeah, that's what I thought. Sometimes it doesn't show the screen I want to share, which were my PowerPoint. So that's why I started a few minutes early. Let's go ahead and give that a go again. Make my PowerPoint and try this one more time on screen share application. Nope, still not there. Not surprising. I'm not sure why it's finicky like this, but not always does it let me see the app that is running. So I will go back and try again as I may to share my screen. Might have to just go in and start this again. If it, Oh, there it is. Yay. Third time's a charm. So there we go. So now you hopefully can see my gender non-binary 101. And my name is Shelly Roth. You all will receive a recording of this. So if you have to jump off or you weren't live with us, I will be sending you not just the recording, but also the slides so that you can review this at your own pace. And there's also a lot of links and resources you can click on. It, we will open the chat as we go through this intermittently to see if there's any questions coming in. So if you um, have questions or comments, please do feel free to share and we'll, ch we'll check them out as we go through. My name is Shelly Roth and the easiest way to find me is at ShellyRoth.com. I've been doing social media training for the last, gosh, almost 14 years, helping businesses grow through social media. I also added gender in the last two years. I wrote my fourth book, Don't Call Me Ma'am, and it talks about me coming out as a transgender person. And I realized that that is my purpose now to bring my ability to educate businesses and adults on what is gender, what is the gender spectrum. So I'm thrilled you're listening to this or joining us um, later. And the easiest uh, thing to tell you about why I'm doing this, there's a uh, organization in Houston, GLBTHomeless.org who any book sales or sales for me being booked to do training for non binary and consulting all go to the GOPTHomeless.org here in Houston. Now, the easiest way to find me is at ShellyRoth.com. That's Shelly with an EY. And when you go there, you will see my calendar of events as well as two groups I'll talk about coming up, my diversity group and my website. Now, the mission at Springboard aligns with the Center for Global Inclusion, which I became authorized by back in 2017. And with their mission, I have the same mission to create a better world. Really, my purpose is to contribute to a society where everything is fair and respectful for all individuals with their similarities and differences, and also to help companies and organizations communicate and add to their performance through sustaining an environment that treats both internal people and external people fairly. And then I added, of course, to raise money and awareness for LGBTQ homeless youth through the nonprofit I support. Today, we're gonna to talk about different definitions we are going to uh, talk about the gender spectrum and what that means. I'll share my story with you and why I've come out now. Gender neutral pronouns, policy suggestions for your organization, how to become an ally, and we'll take Q&A as we go through and at the end. Again, there is a resource section that as long as I have your email address, I will send you this link to the webinar as well as the resource section. So let's start with definitions. Now, Newsweek over 12 years ago came out with a cover 
that showed the mystery of gender. And think about 12 years ago, this was pretty out there. And basically they questioned, what is gender anyway? Is it more than physical details? History and science suggest that gender identity is more complicated than biological birth. So the questions were being out there on a national level. They also were thinking that gender identity is separate from sexual orientation and different from bi biological birth identity. We're gonna cover all this today. Gender in the United States, of course, has been historically male or female based on what we see. Fast forward 12 years, to the National Geographic's issue called Gender Revolution. The whole issue was dedicated to gender and Katie Couric even did a special on it. It really is a deep dive into what gender identity is and we've really come a long way. So if you haven't seen this National Geographic, you haven't seen the Katie Couric special, it is available on demand. The definition of gender is either of two sexes, especially when considered with reference to social and cultural difference rather than biological ones. So think about this, the social and cultural differences. The term is also used more broadly to denote a range of identities that do not correspond to established binary ideas of one or the other, male or female. So you'll hear me talk about binary, non-binary. So the, on the binary, it's one or the other, male and female. So that's the definition of gender. Now, sex, biological sex, is something assigned at birth based on the anatomy that the doctor sees upon birth. Gender identity is assumed to match the biological birth sex of the baby. However, a person's gender identity may not always match their assigned bi biological sex. Gender identity may be on a spectrum. You'll hear the term gender expansive, gender non-binary, gender spectrum. All of those terms means that gender can be fluid, not just one or the other. Now, sexual orientation is somebody's sexual preference, and this is typically confirmed in adolescence. We're going to go through all these in more detail as we go. And then we'll take the fifth term, gender expression. This is how you present yourself in the world. It has nothing really to do with any of the other things listed above. It's just how you present, how your clothes, your hair, etc. Now, if your biological sex matches your gender identity, basically, if you're born a female or born a male, and your gender identity is a woman or your gender identity is a man and they match your biological sex, the term is cisgender, meaning that you are binary. Your birth sex matches your gender identity. By the way, you'll notice links, et cetera, as we go through this that you can access uh, as we go, as when you get this from me. Now, gender expression, is how you present. So in this case, feminine, um, you might have a dress on and your hair might be done and you have makeup. So that would be considered feminine gender expression where masculine could be you have on a suit or you baseball cap backwards would be masculine. I will say the gender expression can be fluid and on a spectrum as well. You may have a cisgender person and they do want to express themselves more as a male or a female, depending on the event they're doing or how they're feeling that day, but their gender identity and biological sex match, so they're cisgender. Gender expression can be on a spectrum. The gender spectrum basically means it's fluid. It's not just one or the other. It could be anywhere in between. It could be certain days more leaning to the feminine, other days leaning to the masculine. That is why it's called the gender spectrum. We're basically biologically born in a male or female body with male or female anatomy. And we're not going to delve deeper than that. There are some folks that are intersex. They're born with ambiguous 
genitalia where um but we're we're going to keep this simple and on a high level we're just going to say male or female anatomy yet gender is a spectrum the majority of millennials do not want to be defined as male or female gender a study was done and surveyed a thousand millennials and as you can see who makes up the largest portion of our population not not the baby boomers but the millennials, almost 87 million millennials and the boomers at about 75. With this study, they found, there we go, found that half of them think gender is a spectrum. So millennials are progressive, forward thinking, they make up the largest segment of our population. That's why I believe education is so crucial and as millennials take over, the, this thinking that we have about one or the other binary will eventually dissipate and it will be gender spectrum. Now, gender identity usually is established by three or four when a child becomes aware of their bodies and of the social and cultural norms associated with male and female. A cisgender person identifies their gender with their biological sex assigned at birth. So born with female genitalia, gender identity, female, cisgender person. Transgender people do not. They're 180 of that. I am transgender. I was born as a female, female anatomy, but my gender identity is male. I am a transgender person. I identify outside of my birth sex. Now, gender expanses or gender non-conforming or gender non-binary are across the spectrum. They fluctuate in what their gender is and what they want to express that particular day or week or month. So it's fluid and can change. As a transgender person, I've never wavered in my gender identity. As a cisgender person, cisgender folks don't waver in their gender. But as a non-conforming or non-binary person, you can be across the spectrum. Again, gender expression is how we present ourselves. It could be our mat matter of dress, our speech, our hairstyle, our behavior. And gender expression can be on a spectrum as well. This is an image of Elle Fanning from the movie Three Generations and Elle Fanning, as we can probably would agree, gender expression is male. It's a really good movie, by the way. It's Three Generations, Elle Fanning plays a transgender male um, in high school with a uh, grandmother and mother and how they embrace and try to come to terms with Elle Fanning's gender. Now, using um, a definitions from a toy manufacturer, we're going to use old Barbie and Ken. We're going to kind of say, well, they were both born. Um, their cisgender biological birthday suit was male and, and female. That's the anatomy they have. The, their gender identity, male or female binary, we could probably say they're cisgender. And by the way, we're making these assumptions. These are just an example versus gender spectrum, terms like non-binary, fluid, gender expansive, and their sexual orientation. Again, we have heterosexual, gay or lesbian, bisexual or asexual. We're gonna say Barbie and Ken were heterosexual. And then their gender expression. When we look, we see hair and clothing and style, and of course, not so much mannerisms because they're just dolls. <laughs> Uh, pretty much fit their birth sex and their gender identity. Although those shoes on Ken, we could say his gender expression might lean a little toward the feminine with wearing red shoes. Now, the definition of a transgender person like myself, born biologically a female, but my gender identity is male, 
And the same born for Laverne Cox, born biologically a male, gender identity is female. But the difference here is some folks choose to have gender affirmation surgery and also take hormones so that their biology, their anatomy, their biological body can match their gender identity. But I want to be very, very clear. The majority of transgender folks do not have surgery. Surgery is expensive. Surgery is painful. Surgery is risky. So the definition of transgender is not related to having affirmation surgery or taking hormones. Just found this quote on Instagram from, by the way, MX instead of Mr. Ms. Asia Kate Dillon, the actor goes by MX, Asia Kate Dillon. They're an actor on the new John Wick movie coming out and also on the series Billions. But I love this statement. We all have an assigned sex. A gender identity is placed on top of that. She says, uh, excuse me, they, her pronoun is they, they don't see I make mistakes too. It's hard. You have to keep remembering. They don't need to change my body in order to be valid as a non-binary person or as a trans person. So that statement, I don't need to change my body in order to be valid as a non-binary or trans person is right on spot on there will be a world someday where people will just be what they want to be and we see parents now raising children in a non-binary environment so they can express themselves as they see fit some more definitions of transgender coming in denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender does not correspond with their birth sex and some people use transgender as an umbrella term for people whose gender identity differs from the sex they were assigned at birth. So anybody on the spectrum would fit under that umbrella. The only folks that wouldn't, of course, are cisgender people. Now, all through the world, there's been more than two genders in a lot of cultures. Our Native Americans have a third gender called two spirits basically referring to people whose gender identity and gender expression is different from what society expects for the binary, the male or female. There are many cultures that recognize two genders. Samoya has a, a third gender called Fa'afin, a uh, gender other than boy or girl, South Asia. I'm not going to try to pronounce some of these. Nigeria, Mexico. Thailand all have a third gender, Tonga, even the United States in Hawaii, the Mahui people have a third gender. And there's a video when you get the slides, you'll be able to watch that video. Now, in the United States, we've seen a lot of mainstream exposure for transgender folks. So Caitlyn Jenner, we know, is an Olympiad, a decathlon gold medal, had their own show came out as trans. Laverne Cox, of course, Orange is the New Black and many other opportunities to be an advocate for the transgender community. A really good series called Transparent on Amazon Prime. If you haven't watched it, I, it you can find it on demand. It, Jeffrey Tabor won an Emmy for his portrayal of a transgender woman. Excellent series. And a new series, actually, this will be season two coming out, but it, it won an Emmy, so it's getting lots of exposure. It's on the FX channel. It's called Pose. Billions, Asha Kate Dillon, we talked about, not, identifies as non-binary. National Geographic and, of course, uh, Katie Couric's special on gender identity on the Nat Geo channel, Gender Revolution. Look for that. It's an excellent series as well. Now, what came up during Katie Kirk's um, special was, could gender be biological? Over the last couple of years, scientists are intrigued by the possibility that a biological event in the womb impacts gender identity. 
they're thinking that it could be possible that at some point in development, signals get mixed in the brain of the baby in utero, and one set of instructions go to the brain and the other set of instructions to the anatomy. But we all know if there, it's clear, one thing is clear, if there's a conflict between the anatomy and the brain, the brain will always win. So here we have an image from the 2020 special and it shows a baby in utero and the signals to the brain are blue or male, but the signals to the genitalia are female. So they're starting to look into, is this something that is in utero even outside of societal and cultural creations. So it'll be interesting to see what they find. Now we're gonna do an exercise right now. I'd like everybody to take out a piece of paper or anything you can draw, something simple, draw a house, uh, write down your favorite food, draw a face, a flower. Let's take a couple seconds and go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to uh, actually we'll finish this exercise and then we'll check and see uh, what we have in the chat area. All right. If you've done that now, I want you to draw the same exact thing in your non dominant hand. So if you're a righty, you're going to use your left hand and lefty you use your right hand and draw the same exact thing you just drew with your dominant hand. Go ahead and take a few minutes to do that. All right, now I want you to share how it felt to draw with your non-dominant hand. Go ahead and in the chat section, give me some words to describe the resulting picture. What did it feel like for you? Um, I will share with you some of the words we've had over the course of presenting this. Difficult, unnatural, unbalanced, funny, strange, awkward. Let me go ahead and see if we have um, any of those words anybody shared with us before we come back to the slides. Okay, um, don't look like we have any comments coming in. So let's go ahead and um, get back to the presentation. And hopefully you all can see this slide. Again, Google Hangouts is, I love it. I've been using it for years, but sometimes it gets quirky. Where this exercise came from is somebody I met online, Hannah Simpson, a transgender woman. She basically says, I compare being transgender to handedness. How do you know you're right-handed or left-handed? Nobody tells you you're not born with a mark on your hand telling people what you are. You just know. When you put something in the wrong hand, you know it feels wrong, it doesn't feel right. That's how gender is. When a trans person is walking around the world in the gender they're not, they know it feels wrong. They just know. And when they live authentically, it's like picking up a pencil in the right hand. It feels good. It feels natural and organic and right. And I can tell you that that is I love this because it's exactly right on. You just don't feel right. <laughs> Gender dysphoria involves a conflict between a person's physical or assigned gender and the gender in which he, she, or they identify. So I was born female. I identify as male. I have had gender dysphoria all my life and probably will to the day I die because my, my shell that I was born in being female does not match my gender identity. People with gender dysphoria may be very uncomfortable, especially younger people with gender they were assigned. Sometimes they described as being uncomfortable with their body or being uncomfortable with the expected roles of their assigned gender. This is another screenshot. I'm not sure I really, I thought I'd throw it in here, but I, I need to process it. But somebody compared um, 
what it's like to be transgender, sometimes the wrong label just ends up on the wrong product. There's nothing wrong with the label itself. There's nothing wrong with what's inside the can. They just don't match because a mistake happened. Yet, at the end of the day, the part that matters is what is inside the can. No amount of denial or stubbornness will make those carrots turn into peas. So I thought that was pretty clever description. And with that, I'm going to share my story with you. And you might be asking, why am I sharing my story now? Well, the bottom line is it's not about me. All of my life, I've suppressed my gender identity. Living a lie really left me frustrated and angry, really feeling like I didn't belong and wasn't equal to anybody. And therefore, gender dysphoria is present and has been all of my life. I feel like I'm six feet two with a buff male body. But when I look in the mirror, of course, I see a female body staring back at me and my daily interactions with other people bring me back to, quote, reality. Kind of like this beagle, they're looking in the mirror and they're drawing a German shepherd. That's what they feel inside. This is titled Self Portrait by the artist Jim Tweedy. Now, what most people have assumed or think they see when they see me and keep in mind, I've been I was an educator, elementary school and now I teach businesses, they've assumed that whether it was a tomboy, a lesbian, a female, all the assumptions people make based on what they see, the bottom line is don't assume. Sometimes what you see is just not what's real for that person. Thank you, Snapchat. This was a filter they had that I could easily make myself the male that I felt inside. I happen to be a transgender person. I was born in a biological body that didn't match my gender identity. And here you can see little Shelly with my brother, Alan. My mom always put bows in my hairs and skirts, etc. I really wasn't comfortable physically and mentally. I had gender dysphoria growing up, needless to say. But keep in mind that little Shelly didn't know any better, not until Shelly was older did I become aware of this conflict in my mind and body. And I became, the more I became aware of something's wrong here, I became introverted, very unhappy and angry. My parents basically called me a miserable soul. And to tell you the truth, they were right. I was one unhappy person. Now you can see the pictures a little bit older, bows and hair, blow up skirts, all that stuff. Um, and then probably this was when I was the oldest, when I had a shorter haircut. All I wanted was a crew cut like my two brothers, Alan and Normie. Um, but unfortunately, still in the skirts and starting to really, really feel uncomfortable in this body I was given. I basically got more and more shy, rarely talked, had zero confidence and thought I was stupid because I didn't really participate, didn't want to stand out. I was very unhappy and very angry. I was born in a physical body that I just couldn't relate to or identify with. Yes, that is me in the bikini. To top it all off, I was given this beautiful female body, long silky hair, and really, all I wanted was a crew cut and a male physique. Keep in mind, I didn't know it at the time. I was probably 19 in this picture. I still didn't know what I was. So at the time, transgender, even lesbian, it was kind of nobody was talking about any of that stuff. So what's a very unhappy, good looking, quote, girl to do? Well, Miss Roth got betrothed. Yep, that's me in the Squirrel Hill News. I got engaged, and I, I don't know if you noticed, but my hair was always covering my breasts. I hated them. I can tell you that for sure. Absolutely hated them. And But I didn't know I had to play a role, so I got engaged to a guy, a great guy. And um, unfortunately, he had to be the recipient of this person that was just not a happy person. Now, anytime I had an opportunity to be a dude, such as renting this Vespa in Mexico, that might as well have been a 1200 CC Harley Davidson. I just felt so tough. I felt like such a guy. 
And I still do this to this day. I stand on rocks or stand on a step or stand on my toes to be taller. And then one of my favorite looks is my, I call it my Michael Landon look. You can't see my breasts in this. My hair was short. And I felt really good about that picture because it, I looked like a guy. Now, of course, Halloween is my favorite holiday and always was. I got to dress like a boy, whether it was something as simple as alfalfa to a biker dude um, was my favorite dressing as tattooed. And I always had German shepherd dogs because they reflected my my in, inner strength and what I felt like inside. So Halloween, get to dress up like a guy, all good. So how and when did I even know I was a transgender person? Well, first I became a great actor. I could have won an Academy Award from the ages probably five to 12. I, I just acted like a girl. I had girlfriends and boyfriends and crushes and all that stuff because that's what everybody was doing. So I acted just like them. Now, as a teenager, as I got older, I basically acted as a cisgender, meaning I was born in a female body, gender identity female. It was an act, and as a heterosexual woman. In college, as a young adult, I took one major step. I, I became, quote, a lesbian, and truly, I was a cisgender lesbian woman, if you will, born in a anatomy female, gender identity female, cis gender and then sexual preference women lesbian and again i might add i am not a lesbian i'm not a cisgender so not until age 44 did i discover watching a lifetime channel a program the light bulb went off the program was all about transgender and boom the fireworks exploded at age 44, folks, it took me that long to discover why I have had gender dysphoria all of my life, why I have never felt comfortable in my body. I happen to be a transgender person. So thank you to Lifetime for that awakening. So after 44 years, I finally learned who I am. Embracing who I was was affirming coming out to others and letting them know I was transgender. Well, not so much. Very minimizing. People laughed. People made fun. People said I was just going through a phase, keeping in mind I'm 44 years old. And back in the closet, I went. 20 years later, I wrote my first, my fourth book. And now I am out as a transgender person. That book is Don't Call Me Ma'am. It is available on Amazon. And it tells my story. I realized at this stage of my life, it's not about me. I can make a difference by using my gifts as an educator, writing curriculum, and also my savvy for business as a business person to raise awareness and raise money for GOBT homeless and, of course, be an example for others. So with that, I've created gender inclusive environments at companies. I go in and speak and train. Um, whether it's big companies, small companies, organizations, teachers, parents, employee resource groups, those are ERGs. I also will help companies with their policy, consulting, helping them understand how to be more inclusive. And I'll tell you what, misgendering people does affect your bottom line profits. I'm working on a survey that I'm going to do to see if I can quantify that, how it does affect your, your bottom line profits. The main reason, though, above and beyond your bottom line profits, is transgender people are extremely high risk to be bullied, to be sexually assaulted, or to attempt suicide. The numbers are staggering. This was a few years ago, but I'm sure it's still pretty much there, where the general population suicide rate, attempted suicide rate, is 4.6%. The trans or gender nonconforming population is 41%. And a new stat I just found yesterday, uh, the Center for Disease Control states that transgender and gender non-conforming youth 
35% are bullied and 35% have attempted suicide in the past 12 months. If you want to read that article, the link is there. That is just unacceptable. I will do this gender training till the day I leave this planet because my purpose is to bring understanding to the population. Now, according to the National Center for Transgender Equality, just in the workplace, one in two, that's 50%, have faced adverse effects. 44% of transgender folks are passed over for a job. 23% were denied promotions. 26% were fired for being transgender. Three in four experienced discrimination. And education, of course, raises awareness and hopefully dollars for the GLB, LGBTQ homeless youth that I support here in Houston. You can learn more at my website and the diversity inclusion section on the coursework that I bring. Now, how can you make a difference? You might be saying, well, I'm cisgender. I, I'm not on the gender spectrum. I'm not transgender. But guess what? You can become an ally. One of the very simple things you can do for your organization and even yourself is ask people about their pronouns. There's a really good video to watch about pronouns that you'll be able to click on when you get these slides from me. And if you have any questions when you watch it, please just email me. Now, there's different pronoun choices. Of course, we're all familiar with she and he and they, but they and them and their are gender neutral pronouns. They are singular form of they, them, and their based on being gender neutral. Yes, my English teachers out there, it is okay to use they, them, and their as a singular pronoun. Though singular is old, they as a non-binary pronoun is new and useful. And then you'll see some of the other pronouns, they're called neo-pronouns, Personal pronoun used by people whose gender lies outside the binary, the male or female. Here's an example of how you might use gender neutral pronouns. Shelley presented to a diversity group last week on gender neutral pronouns. They, instead of she, were open and honest about the difference we can make for a transgender person. Their, instead of her, call to action was to be aware and ask what names and pronouns people prefer. Bring Shelly to tell their story to your organization. So it takes some practice, and let me tell you, you heard me earlier, I messed up. It's easy to mess up. Just realize your mistake, correct it, and apologize and move on. Now, Facebook's been in on this for a long time. You can go when you're filling out your profile on Facebook. And by the way, I've been teaching Facebook for business for almost 14 years now. But you can go when you fill out your personal profile and start typing trans, T-R-A, and you'll see all the stuff that comes up under gender custom. You also can start typing G, and you can see all the stuff that comes up under gender a gender, gender nonconforming, gender questioning, all the choices Facebook gives you. They even give you an option on what pronoun do you prefer. I absolutely love this. Wish them a happy birthday. So there's the very easy third ca category. Keep it neutral, folks, and you won't go wrong. Now, you, you see more and more um, events, like this was the American Association of Law Libraries in Austin had a big event, and they had ribbons you could put on your name badge that show my pronouns are. Um, at Vanderbilt, they have name tags with preferred pronouns listed. You'll also see that I created a band when I do events and shows that has pronouns of choice. You can also ask people, you can, excuse me, add your pronouns to LinkedIn and your email signature and also ask people what pronouns and name do you prefer? This is such an easy practice to add to any intake forms or just basically anywhere where you're interacting with people. Here's an example on my LinkedIn profile. You can see there's my name and after my pronouns, they comma them. And also, this is my Outlook email signature that's on there. You'll see that Shelly Roth, pronouns, they, them. Very easy to add this, and it certainly gets a message across, and it helps change minds and helps educate. Something else you might do is add pronouns to your business card. If you 
felt compelled to do that. And also when you introduce somebody, just say, hi, I'm Shelly. I use they, them, there. What are your name and pronouns? It feels kind of awkward at first, but practice makes perfect and practice becomes habit. Again, becoming an ally, just become aware. The fact that you're even listening to this, I give you props and kudos because you're here. Get involved. Speak out if you hear something. Include gender diverse people in discussion. Take on the work of inclusion and think about your language. Be willing to correct others and stay educated about news and issues. Bring me in to teach gender diversity to your company. Also, you can go to ShellyRoth.com and you'll see you can join my gender diversity group. It's a private group on Facebook. You have to request to join. I share um, current articles and current information on what's happening. And you'll also see you can sign up for my gender advocacy newsletter. And you'll see my website. You can click on that to go to my diversity inclusion website. I created something called the tip card. It's a postcard sized card. When you go to uh, Shelly Ross, you'll see the tip card right there. You can download this and print it yourself and put your own name on it because I like to say I'm changing the world one pronoun at a time. When you open up the tip card, you'll see a, a, a card that you can put your own name and image on if you choose to, or feel free to leave mine and pass it out. I basically leave this tip card at every restaurant that I go to, especially in particular if they call me ma'am or misgender me. The, the tip card basically says how to be gender neutral and use very nonspecific terms like they, them, and their, or folks, my friends, you all, just stay neutral. So the tip cards have been a hit. Um, I also take them to doctor's offices, Walgreens, anywhere I am interfacing with a company that is misgendering me. Because what does misgendering do? It obviously will affect your bottom line, but more importantly, you have minimize that person, you have misgendered them, and it's not a good feeling to be called by the wrong name, by the wrong pronouns. There is even a International Pronoun Day, October 17th. I participated in the one last year. The second one's coming up. They have a Facebook page you can go to, International Pronouns Day. Organizers, I presented this coursework, which I will do again this year. Oh, what was that link there? Oh, pronounceday.org. Yeah, you can go to their website as well. Now, some policy ideas for your organization. This, this is easy to do, but the first question I will ask, does your organization have any policies for gender nonconforming workers? It's interesting because sometimes I'll get, we are considering, and I get too many of what does that even mean? It's how are you going to address people that are gender neutral on your intake forms, when you hire somebody, when your customer service people are talking over the phone to somebody, any policy for gender non-conforming people. Not just workers, not just employees. Now, frontline communication tips, best practices, if you will, here are some tips for you. When you're addressing patients, avoid using terms like sir or ma'am. Instead of, how may I help you today? When talking to coworkers, avoid, and this doesn't just have to be in the medical field, these examples are from the medical field, but avoid pronouns and other gender terms. Instead of, she is waiting, he is waiting, your patient is in the waiting room, or they are here for their three o'clock appointment. Politely ask what name and pronouns are preferred by the patient. I mean, every time I go see my doctor, I tell them this should be on their intake form. What name would you like to use? What pronouns would you like? How would you like to be addressed? And if you make a mistake, don't make a big deal out of it. Just apologize for using the wrong pronouns. I didn't mean any disrespect. It's all learning for us, everybody. Practice makes perfect. Create and follow protocol 
for noting preferred names and pronouns, how to address mail and leaving messages for people. Have clear lines of referral. Make somebody in your staff responsible for providing guidance and setting procedures. And then, of course, you have to have training and retraining. Ask open-ended questions. Don't make assumptions based on what you see. Instead of, who did you spend your life with, you could ask, instead of saying, were you married? Do you have grandkids? How about, who's in your family? Who's important to you? Instead of a closed question like, is this your daughter or son? It's better to open things. I'd love to hear about these people if you'd like to tell me. Again, keeping it open, keeping it neutral. Don't make assumptions based on what you see. And as Bob Dylan said, the times, they are a changing. This was pretty recent. This year, New York has added a non-binary gender option on birth certificates. You can read the article, but it basically looks like this, M, F, and X. Yay, New York. Thank you. Gender neutral teacher in Philly and non-binary teachers embrace non-binary honor, honor, honorifics, MX. I haven't seen that on a lot of forms, but I'm sure we'll start seeing more of that. Thank you very much. And then um, I got this from a friend of mine, the University of Texas Medical Center here in Houston. You can see male, female, transgender. Again, where transgender might be an umbrella term for anybody on the gender spectrum. And then I was so pleasantly surprised when I was checking in for a flight on United Airlines a couple months ago, Ma female, male, undisclosed or unspecified. Yay, thank you United. Back in 2017, Oregon residents legally recognized a third gender, neither man or woman, granted non-binary status in D.C. District of Columbia started offering the gender neutral choice of X on driver's license and ID cards. Last year, California legally recognized a third gender with the passage of Bill SB 179. And even during the 2018 Super Bowl commercial, Coca-Cola used the pronoun Z and he and she and they and them using different voices during the commercial. The video, you can click on and watch it, but there was a Twitter storm. Everybody went crazy. The fact that Coca-Cola acknowledged they them pronouns during the Super Bowl. Um, did you all see all in cap letters, Coca-Cola commercial? They referred to a LGBT person as them. They really acknowledge my pronouns. I mean, everybody was so, so excited about that. Even Miss um, Manners, had a question on gender neutral pronouns. And the last time I looked, there were 500 comments, over 500 comments on that. You can access that at, um, at Miss Manners, the link in there. And then again, don't forget, you can join my gender diversity group at ShellyRoth.com. Click on the Facebook gender diversity group. Sign up for my gender diversity newsletter also at ShellyRoth.com. And think about bringing some of my trainings into your company. There are Gender 101, which is kind of what we're covering today. Why language matters, creating an inclusive environment. Don't call me ma'am, living in a world without labels. I also can help with your inclusion policies inside your organization. Keeping in mind, when you bring me in, every dollar goes to goblthomeless.org here in Houston. If you're interested in helping and supporting GLBT Homeless, please do email me at sroth at shellyroth.com. And remember, love is love. Treat others as you want to be treated. We're all souls on earth trying to make our way. Love thy neighbor. And folks, don't ask questions you wouldn't want asked of you. Such a simple request, so sometimes hard to do. Easiest way to find me in all of my different social media properties, ShellyRoth.com. If you're into social media, you can go to my YouTube channel. I do, I guess I've done over 300 video tips on Facebook and LinkedIn, etc. You can check it out. And coming up in Houston, I have live lunch and learns on LinkedIn and Facebook. Just go to my events calendar. 
and check out when my next Gender 101 webinar is. All right, we're going to take any questions now from everybody. I will be sending this out to anybody who sends me their email. Send to sroth at shellyroth.com. Anybody that's registered today for this session, I will be sending you the link to the slides as well as the link to the recording. So let me go ahead. I'm going to get out of here and head over and stop sharing my screen. See if we have any comments or questions. I'm going to get this slide up so you can, before I stop screen sharing, I will get you my contact information. We'll have that one up there. Um, yeah, so let me jump back again, see if we have anybody asking anything in the chat area. It looks like we have, oh, they're just asking for an email address. Let me type that in the chat. Um, one of the questions, yes, I do travel to um, outside of Houston uh, to come in and help organizations or train organizations. Yes, I do. Feel free to shoot me an email. Um, best way to reach me, uh, you can just go to my, you can go to ShellyRoth.com, but uh, specifically, if I could spell, I was, I'm going to add this to the chat. You can go to SpringboardWorks.com forward slash diversity hyphen inclusion. Or Shelley Ross is probably the easiest way as well. Um, yes, my books are on Amazon. Uh, when you go to ShellyRoth.com, uh, you can see uh, Amazon books are listed there. Yes, they're in uh, Kindle version or e-version as well as hard copy. All right. I think that covers all the questions. I'll wait a few more seconds. I thank everybody for listening either uh, before or after the fact while we're together or later. Just get a hold of me if I can answer any more of your questions. And I hope you got some good information out of this. Have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you soon.